Hey, Suffering Student here, and today we're going to be talking about UML, and this is the first episode in a new series discussing the different kind and the uses of UML. So, basically, UML is a unified modeling language, which means it is a programming language, but it's not a normal programming language like C or Java. It is a visualization tool which allows developers and the clients to get an easier or like a better picture of actually the program that's going to be developed. So in this series, I'll be using Plant UML, which is a tool to create UML because UML is just like the visualization part. There's not really a it's not a, really a built-in tool, but I'll be using Plant UML, and there'll be a link down in the description if you want to know how to like get it set up with um, IntelliJ. But the basics of UML is simply having some kind of program that allow us to show the software for people that might not be very um, t tech savvy to also at least have some kind of understanding of it. But one of the basics of UML is that it's built around object-oriented programming. So a very basic part and what I'll also be discussing today is the class structure. So most often when coming to like UML, we will be using some kind of classes. Or, for example, if you want us to show like the structural part of UML, but we also have like a behavioral part of UML, where we either show like the structure of the program or more like the behavior of the program. So this is more the structural part, where I'll first be discussing the setup of a class. So a class is built off of attributes and operations. And the attributes are the attributes as we know normally from a class, and the operations are kind of like the, the methods all the executable methods from the class. And the class are built up with a name. So let's create another class. So I'll just go class dog, for example. And we will make it a bit bigger. There we go, the dog. So first, let's give the dog some attributes. So first of all, we would give it a name. So we would do, first, we would have the visibility modifier. So in Java, we have public, which is a plus. We have number, which means protected, and minus, which means private. So we just create a public name, and we would like to give it a type as well. So for example, the name would be of type string. Let's remove the class for now to make it a bit more visible. So for example, our dog has an attribute name, that's public of the type of string, but let's make it private because we're going to be using OOP where we're going to be have the encapsulation principles. And maybe we would have some kind of protected ID, which would be an integer, for example. Just an example. And then to show some kind of methods, we would simply maybe have a public get name method and we use the brackets to show it's a method and in the same way we do the return type we need for the attributes are doing the, the like the type of the attribute we do the return type for the get name and in this case it would be a return type string so that's pretty much the basics of creating a class in uml then uml is very often used to create these um, components and then we would have the relationship between these components. So for example, we might have a dog, and then we might also have an owner. So we could have like the, the owner, no, a dog. And then suddenly we're having some kind of relationship and lots of different errors and using these arrows in a lot of different ways. We can have different arrows, dotted lines, and a lot of different stuff that we're gonna continue and be discussing all of it. But that's more of the basics of our UML, which is some kind of like information and the relationship between the information. So that's the basics of the introduction to UML. Hope you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day.